In this episode, I'd like to talk a little bit about something that a lot of us take for granted. I, I know I certainly never thought about it very deeply. And that's the stability and health of mains voltage. A lot of us will maybe from time to time for some reason, uh, maybe it's just out of curiosity or more likely it's in the context of troubleshooting a power supply, will have reason to stick your multimeter leads across line voltage and you'll read something in the neighborhood of 120 volts AC RMS. And uh, you know, on any given time, you just kind of touch the meter leads to the source. You get a reading. It seems to be in the neighborhood of what you would expect, and you move on because that's really all you needed to know. That was sufficient for the measurement. But if you kind of continue taking measurements, you find out that the line voltage is fairly variable. Uh, so if you've been watching the display of this bench meter, since I've been talking, you've seen it range uh, between 120 and 121 volts RMS. And that's in the course of about a minute. In this video, I'd like to delve into that a little bit more and understand this variation of the line voltage. But what we'll start is what on earth possessed me to begin looking into this in the first place. So here we have an old Sencor emissions type tube tester, the TC142. As I might have mentioned before, I really like this tube tester. This is my go-to tube tester. But um, I was testing a tube. In this case, it was a uh, 6H6. And uh, the way you do this is you, you turn it on and uh, you have a calibration setting right here, which essentially is kind of the equivalent of a line control or a line setting function. And uh, so, you know, you, you peek it up, you, you get it over right uh, so that it's in line with the rightmost calibration line on the meter. And I'm going to blow this up here just to see if this, we see what I saw. So let me just peek it up a little bit more. All right, so there it's pretty well in line. And we're just going to watch this. Um, and what I saw, see there it moved. So what I saw when I looked at this closely uh, was that the uh, the meter bounces around. And, you know, this really doesn't make any difference for tube testing because, you know, this is not a precision measurement. So you see here it's, you know, a little bit over. And just a minute ago it was a little bit under. And uh, you say, well, maybe that's because the filament's heating up and maybe it is. But if you, if you leave this on for a while and uh, you know, kind of convince yourself that everything should equilibrate, you still see this behavior. I started asking myself, how could that be? See there, it's moving. And so I thought, well, you know, this is an old instrument. Maybe it ha it's because uh, you know, I've got a leaky capacitor or resistor failing or something like that. To make a long story short, it's not any of those things. I, I took it apart. I did, in fact, replace a couple passive components. I uh, recalibrated it, and uh, you know we still see the same behavior. So it's not the tube tester. So it occurred to me, well, could this possibly be due to instabilities in the line voltage? Well, that's what we're going to uh, take a look at next. Before going any farther in this video, I should say that I do not recommend anyone try this. And if you're not used to working with mains power, uh, you should not do this. This is dangerous, you can hurt yourself, you could kill yourself, same goes for your equipment. Don't do this. This is on a digital oscilloscope, and as you might have noticed earlier, I'm looking at mains power through an isolation transformer. This is extremely important. If you don't understand why that's important and how you can easily blow up your oscilloscope and uh, shock yourself, I will link in a couple videos down below. I've also got a playlist on isolation and you should review those. But anyway, we're looking at this through an isolation transformer and uh, there's the, the waveform of AC at my location. Um, in channel two here, I've got what it should look like. This is a 60 hertz 
AC waveform that comes out of a function generator. Uh, it's drifting a little bit because I'm not triggering on channel 2, uh, but uh, just for illustrative purposes. Notice how the sine wave is very smooth at the peaks and the troughs. There's a nice smooth transition on the synthetic curve, but the power line frequency, power line signal, is very rough at the peaks and troughs. The peaks and troughs are connected by, by almost straight lines. There's really not a lot of curvature to that. So this is not a very smooth waveform. If one looks at the spectrum of this, so if we pick FFT, Fast Fourier Transform, and display that, and let me just step around here so I can adjust it without blocking. Uh, and let's, uh, first of all, let's adjust the right control, <laughs> the time base. Let's bring enough waveforms in here that we can get good sample and frequency space. Okay. And we'll go with that for now. So we're sampling over many cycles and the frequency division on this, see if I can make this a little clearer maybe. Each, so each division here is 100 hertz. I don't really think you can see the divisions there. Maybe you can. Suffice it to say that this is the fundamental and that comes in at 60 hertz. Uh, but then we have, you know, harmonics up here. They're, you know, they're attenuated down many dB, but they're very prominent and those harmonics are what's responsible for the distorted waveform of the 60 hertz power line signal. When you look closely uh, at the graticules and measure those different spikes in the harmonics, this turns out to be uh, 180 hertz. And this third feature right here is right around 300 hertz. So this is not at all what you would expect, what I would expect anyway, from the frequency domain. Uh, I would expect, you know, if it were pure sinusoid, you should have a 60 hertz spike. And if you had a little bit of the first harmonic, then you would have a spike at 120 hertz, not 180 hertz. 180 hertz is the third harmonic. Um, and then, you know, where this 300 hertz feature is coming from is anyone's guess. But at any rate, uh, this, is not a, this is not a pure spectrum. This has a significant amount of uh, undesired features. And that really is why, uh, let's turn this off here. That really is why we see this very unsinusoidal waveform in the power line. I've noticed this deformed sine wave uh, signature of the power line at my location. It's, it's very, it's very stable in that sense. I've noticed this over the course of many months. The, the frequency that uh, is, read, is reading out here on the Rigol is, is very solid at 60 hertz. That's, that's good. Uh, and if you've been kind of following along down here, every now and then you'll see the volts RMS change. It's kind of hard to see at this scale on the oscilloscope. So that's what we'll talk about next. At the beginning of the video, I showed a screenshot uh, for the course of a minute or a minute and a half of a bench voltmeter. Probably noticed it uh, just kind of informally wobbling uh, and changing over the course of the time of the intro. Well, I did an experiment where every 15 seconds I wrote down the voltage reading, and I did that for about 20 minutes. This is this is the data that uh, that I collected, right? This is meant to be illustrative. This is, you know, not out to a gazillion decimal points. It's kind of interesting. First thing you notice is that, that in fact, it does wobble. You, know, you, you go from the 119 range to the 120 range, uh, kind of stays in the 120s for a while, and then it goes down to the 119s for a while, and then it kind of goes back up, and so on and so forth. So let's look at the data a little bit differently. This is the data plotted out in R, and you see that it's... You know, very, it's all over the place, so it's variable over time. 
the axes here go from 119.2 volts RMS to 120.4. There's this average running through here, and the statistics of this time series, uh, when you uh, uh, compute them, are the, uh, the mean, which is the dotted line, is 119.9 volts RMS. Uh, and the median is the same, it's 119.9 which means that 50% of the data fall above this line and 50% of the data fall below that line. The standard deviation here is a quarter of a volt and the minimum reading is 119.1 volts down here and the maximum reading, and there's two of them up here, uh, is 120.4 volts. Uh, so it's a little over a volt difference between the min and the max, which means that here in 20 minutes, the line voltage changed by one volt or a little less than one percent. I took these data in the morning. I've done similar things before, not quite as, as formally as recording the data and plotting them all out, but I've noticed larger deviations over smaller time scales in the evening hours. What do these data look like in terms of frequency of occurrence? Well, this is a histogram of the data, uh, and you see that you know, there's a, there's a tail out to the left and out to the right. Uh, there, you know, most of the data fall within, you know, roughly a standard deviation of the mean, so that's reassuring. If you know about statistics, the first question you might ask is, are these data normal? And the answer to that is, well, no, they're not. They fail the Shapiro-Wilkes test. Uh, and, in fact, if you just, you know, simply plot out a QQ plot of these data, you see that uh, that they're they're really not normal at all. So you know the distribution of voltages in time, you may or may not expect them to be distributed in a normal distribution. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is that you know the the line voltage can change by by a fair amount uh, on the order of a percent in a fairly short period of time. And I think that's what we saw when we were looking at the tube tester and uh, trying to calibrate it. Those very small deviations in the meter uh, calibration in time correspond to changes in the power line voltage. If you found this interesting, please give it a big thumbs up below. Comments are always welcome. And as always, thank you very much for watching.